Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. In my last video, I talked about uterine tube or fallopian tube. If you have not seen that video, then click on the button and watch the video now. Today, I am going to talk about next topic of our female uterine system, which is uterus along with the cervix and vagina. So, today's topic is a little bit tough and it's complicated to understand. So, concentrate harder, okay? Now, as you can see in this photo, this is our uterus, okay? So, this is a medical term. In common word, we say womb. Womb is a layman's term or common word. And in Greek word, it is known as hystera. Okay. So it is basically a child bearing organ which presents in between the urinary bladder and the rectum in the deep pelvic cavity in women. Okay. Now, the measurement, as you can see in this photo, the length is 7 to 8 centimeter and the broadness is almost 5 to 6 centimeter and the thickness is. 2 to 3 centimeter okay and the weight ranges from 30 to 40 gram now we divide our uterus into three segments okay upper part is fundus middle part is body and the lower part is cervix okay now the junction point in between the body and the cervix is a thin constricted area is known as isthmus okay now try to understand one basic thing which is there are the position and the angles of uterus okay now try to understand as you can see in this photo you have to remember three axes or three long axes which is one long axis of vagina another long axis of cervix another long axis of uterus why because see suppose vagina is a long canal okay so suppose imagine this leaf is a vagina okay this ridged part is a cervix as you can see in this photo cervix is small area anyway and the entire part is uterus now what happens this uterus this uterus rest upper surface of the urinary bladder and the tip of the uterus directs anteriorly okay now i am talking this condition when the bladder is empty now when the bladder is filled with urine when it's filled with urine so the upper part of the uterus projects superiorly and anteriorly i mean upward and anteriorly anyway so distant part of the urinary bladder it doesn't matter so mainly we are talking about when the bladder is empty and the uterus directs extremely anteriorly or forward now at this position what happens this is the canal of vagina so you are getting the long axis of vagina now at this long axis you are getting the cervix is little bit bent so you are getting another long axis of cervix and there is the uterus you are getting another long axis of uterus so you are getting three long axis now here is the thing you have to understand that the angle in between the long axis of vagina and the long axis of cervix creating 90 degree angle and this position in between the cervix and the vagina is known as antiversion of uterus now before i talk about another angle you have to understand this suppose this is the cervix wrist joint my wrist joint is the cervix and entire palm is uterus okay now if this is the cervix and this is the uterus then i, I already said that this uterus rests upper surface of the urinary bladder so it's creating automatic angle okay in between the long axis of cervix and the long axis of uterus the angle forms almost 120 degree to 170 degree okay now this wide range angle and this position is known as anti-flexion okay so here is the ultimate shortcut you have to understand that the angle between the long axis of cervix and the long axis of vagina is known as antiversion and the angle between the long axis of cervix and the long axis of uterus is known as anti-flexion finish now little bit details about the parts of the uterus as you can see in this photo that you are getting the upper part of the uterus is known as fundus or the upper part of the body of the uterus is known as fundus okay fundus is actually doom shaped okay from upside view it is convex each side i mean right side left side you are getting at this position the opening of uterine tube or fallopian tube from right side left side okay so this is almost important and upper surface of this fundus is covered by peritoneum finish now next part is body body has main two surface one is anterior surface and posterior surface 
entire surface is related with the our urinary bladder urinary bladder is known as vesicle so entire surface is also known as vesicular surface okay now in the posterior surface the posterior surface related towards the few cells of intestine mainly the ileum and few portion of the sigmoid colon and mostly the rectum so due to the major presence of the rectum we this posterior surface of the uterus is known as rectal surface okay now at this point you are getting two extra additional point first of all to avoid the friction in between urinary bladder and the uterus there is a protection layer of peritoneum which uh, gives a peritoneal fold and it looks like a pouch so we call it vesico uterine pouch finish second additional knowledge point is same to say to avoid the friction in between the rectum and the uterus there is recto uterine pouch peritoneum folds looks like a pouch we call it recto uterine pouch of douglas finish and now the lateral border of the uterus okay suppose okay i already told you that if this is fundus and if this is lateral border at this junctional point of fundus and the lateral border fallopian tube gets inside okay and you are getting the intrauterine part of the fallopian tube i told you in my fallopian tube okay anyway so if this is the lateral border from outside it is convex shaped and at this point you are getting the fallopian tube at this point what happens uterus gives outside projection this projection as you can see in this photo is known as cornua okay now entero inferior position of the cornua you are getting attachment site of ovarian ligament okay i told you about i told about this ovarian ligament in ovary video okay and the posterior inferior to this cornua you are getting attachment site of the round ligament of the uterus okay this is the extremely very very important point now in the whole length of the lateral border there is attachment of the broad ligament of the uterus along with the broad ligament of uterus in lateral position this uterus is related to the uterine artery and uterine vein along with the uterine nervous plexus that's it now next point which is very very important and comes always in exam which is what is the support of the uterus okay what are the supports there are how this uterus hangs in the pelvic cavity so you are getting primary support and secondary support in primary support you are getting pelvic diaphragm perineal muscles and distal urethral sphincter okay also you are getting pubo cervical ligament then transverse ligament of mcintosh then uterosacral ligament and also round ligament of uterus okay so these all are the primary support and what are the secondary support the secondary supports are first of all broad ligament of uterus and those peritoneal folds which looks like pouch anteriorly basic uterine pouch and posteriorly recto uterine pouch of douglas so these are all false support or uh, secondary support okay you can screenshot about this and remember these things and i will talk about and um, among all of these things perineal body and broad ligament of uterus is very very important and this comes under special topic so i will talk about these things in my special chapter not here okay in the blood supply you are getting arterial supply and venous drainage and arterial supply you are getting primarily from uterine artery each side right side left side and extra additional branches from vaginal artery ovarian artery fallopian artery i mean the tube so these are all arterial supply and in venous drainage you are getting uterine venous plexus additionally which connects with the cervical and the vaginal venous plexus in nerve supply also you are getting sympathetic and parasympathetic component in sympathetic you are getting t12 l1 finish and in parasympathetic we are getting same old s2 s3 s4 got now the function of uterus uterus has mainly two function one is it helps in menstruation it has one layer which sheds in each and every month during menstrual period of women the next function is the uterus acts as a protection chamber where it nourishes and helps to grow the fetus in pregnancy period that's all now in microanatomy of uterus you are getting basically three layers of uterus inner one is endometrium middle one is myometrium and the last one is perimetrium okay now see 
Perimetrium is basically is a peritoneal layer, gown. Myometrium, myo means muscles. So basically smooth muscles along with the modified elastic tissue and fibrous tissue. And you are getting the third layer which is innermost endometrial layer. Endometrial has again two sub layer which is basal layer and functional layer. Basal layer it remains fixed, it doesn't change. And the functional layer each and every month this layer always sheds down or crumbles downside during menstruation period okay or menstrual cycle anyway our next point is our cervix okay it is cylindrical part non-mobile fixed 2.5 centimeter in length okay the lower part of the cervix projects towards the vagina and creates vaginal formices i will talk about this thing later but now at this condition it creates two position of cervix one position in the vagina we call it vaginal part of cervix another position above the vagina okay so we call it supravaginal part of the cervix okay now supravaginal part is related anteriorly to the urinary blood as you can see in this photo and posteriorly to the rectum along with the rectal uterine pouch and laterally you are getting uterine artery uterine vein along with the your ureter both sides okay now one thing you have to understand that this cervix has two part okay inner opening and outer opening the inner opening is known as internal os and the outer opening is known as external os internal os face towards the uterus gone and the external os face towards the vagina done finished and now as you can see this photo which is the vagina in female now in greek word it is known as kolpos okay and in local word or its common man term we say lots of words which i'm not going to say here anyway it is a fibromuscular canal shaped structure present in front of the rectum and behind or the posterior to the urethra okay and it extends from the vulva i will talk about this vulva and the outer part of the vagina later it extends from the vulva to uterus this long canal is directed upward and backward okay it's diagonal as i said now due to the position this diagonal it has tube shaped eccentric origin where the anterior wall of the vagina is almost 8 centimeter and the posterior wall of the vagina is almost 10 centimeter okay now at the perspective of the entire length of the vagina in relation you will get in anteriorly urinary bladder and the urethra and posteriorly rectum and anal gland. but in the lateral wall of the vagina you are getting transverse cervical ligament then pubococcygeus muscle and few parts of the perineal membrane along with the lots of bartholin gland okay i will talk about all these things later in special topic not here not now in the blood supply you are getting again battery supply and balanced drainage in arterial supply you are getting primary branch from the vaginal artery which is a branch of internal iliac artery along with a few branches from uterine artery then internal quadrantal artery then middle lateral artery okay these are the arterial supply now in venous drainage vaginal venous plexus drains into the internal iliac vein done finish the nerve supply you are getting sympathetic and parasympathetic components sympathetic from l1 l2 gone and parasympathetic yeah same s2 s3 s4 done finish so this is all about our uterus cervix and vagina if you understand little bit then subscribe and share till then bye